Welcome back to Let's Play Grandia 2. Last time, we got roped into what effectively was a date with both Elena and Millennia. And granted that that's a thing that happened, I think it was handled exceptionally tastefully, and the characters were all kept very much in character the whole way through. Like, normally that's the part of a game that I hate. It's like, hey, let's make them go through awkward things in order to be funny, but that was like, it was super enjoyable, and we got to see a lot of their interaction that was super nice. So Rowan pointed us over here. I also took care of equipping Millennia and um, buying things. But Rowan pointed us towards this boat, so... So Rowan's got some story to tell. That's cool. Okay, so we're at the castle. Um, we're supposed to go right up here, but you can actually run around a little bit. Like, you can't go around that side, but you can run around the front of the castle. Not that you can do much there, but you can. Just a big old room. Got a dock with a boat. Can't do anything with it. I think you can get an item somewhere around here. Uh, that door's locked. Oh no, I guess this is it. Oh well, never mind then. Quickly, to the assistance of the castle. Wow, a prince! Holy crap! Honestly, we figured it out by now, I mean, really. And now we're roped into something fantastic. And we find ourselves in a secret passage leading inside the dungeon, or inside the castle itself. Oh hey, a Karo. I think you have to give this guy like three Poth nuts or something. We should have plenty. Oh, he's doing something. Yep, there we go. Three Poth nuts. And now he follows us around. He's like holding on to us, got his big bushy tail going under our leg, or under our arm. This place is kind of dark though, so it's nice to have that light. So where are we going? Okay, we can't go that way. And we'll be doing some block pushing. Okay, you know what, we've seen these guys before, but let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Oh, you don't actually have Burn Flame anymore. I think Tremor will hurt these guys, though. As soon as I get enough points, I'm going to buy the next one, which is the... the Eyeball ability. Right now, I don't have it, though. Oh, let's just beat a guy. You can really feel it. <laughs> hey, check this out. 
Ryudo almost had it. Tremor seemed to hurt everybody evenly. Uh, Burn Flame seemed to hit, hurt the Chameleons for more, and the other ones for less. So what was that, a Mirage Earring? Or a Mirage Ring? Yeah, Mirage... Oh, I have like three of them. Oh, I also equipped them with some new accessories. Which, I equipped Ryudo with the Rage Ring, which ups my SP recovery by three. I don't know if that's when I get hit or when I deal damage. And then I give Merig the Demon's Tears, which adds one, I think, adds one to my combo. We'll see how that works. Boga Boga. Okay, so these guys are actually weak to fire, but I'm gonna stab them anyway, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that was three attacks out of him. Alright, well, let's burn him. I was debating just killing them all with melee attacks, and then I figured I'll just burn them. Uh, Rowan no longer has the warp knife, which is kind of sad, but you need to upgrade damage when you got upgrade damage. I kept the warp knife, warp knife though, so when I need it at some point, should I deem it needed, I can, I still have it. I didn't sell it. Lightning Tiara. Well, that's gonna be headgear, actually. For either Millennia or Rowan. Nope, headgear. Yeah, that's nice. What do you have? You're the only one who can equip it. Well, that's cool. Because it's better for you anyway. Okay, so we came that way, so we're going... Hi. How are you doing? Not entirely sure when Merrick got poisoned. Ah, oh, what the crap are you? No, I'm starting you with an ad the advantage. Alright, well, let's start by experimenting. Do you have anything other than Burn Flame and Tremor? Really. Burn Flame it is! Torture! All weak to fire, that's cool beans. Your arrow didn't really... Well, we didn't actually see anything they did, but uh... Weak to fire! A lot of money. I don't have as much use for money anymore. Is this like the only way I could go? I'm lost. Yes, it is. Okay, got it. Know where I am. It's like I'm playing Newtopia 2 all over again. Yeah, shove that box. Anything on the other side? Nope. Will we get to see if they do anything today? Possibly. I'm just gonna combo him. Then I'm gonna have you burn flame him. Actually, maybe I should have Millennia. Ah, Millennia's so late in the, in the queue. How about this? I'll get MP back eventually. Hit you with your big old skull head. I'm gonna attack that one. Guess we're not gonna see what they do. That's cool. Well, I'll cut it in, I guess, if I ever see them do anything terrifying. So where are we going? Okay, so it's, it's actually been brought to my attention that um, over the course of this series, I've been taking a much more psychological approach to this game and the characters in it. Looking at, like, how Ryudo acts and why he's acting that way. And that wasn't actually my intention, though I realize now that I have been. 
honestly, I started doing it because the very, very beginning of this game was a very, very tell, had a very, very tell, don't show kind of feel to it. So it's like, yeah, Ryudo's despicable, and Geo Hunt... Geohounds are despicable and all of that, and you're just gonna have to take our word for it. When, like, there's so much more going into how he would act than just, like, tell him that and wish him the best of luck. So I was mostly just trying to make sure people understood, like, yeah, this is where he's coming from. That was at the very beginning, though. Like, I feel like since then, I also kind of wanted to focus on other characters. Just so Ryuto wasn't like, singled out, because it felt like, why am I focusing so hard on Ryudo? We can't open that door, but, um... Well, actually, to open that door, you can see the sideways gear right here that I'm standing on top of. We're gonna turn that gear. So we're gonna have to get back to that. But yeah, not my intention at all, but it, I guess it's kind of turned out that way, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's neat! And I think it goes to show that, like, after I've... Well, we're not going up that way. That, like, after I've explained anything, the game doesn't come out and tell you anything about why a lot of the characters are acting how they do. But it all makes so much sense. It really tells you how good the writing is. Those guys can use Burn Flame. Good to know. Also, um, should have enough. Spellbinding Eye. Spellbinding Eye is a heck of a move. Actually, um, it can be, it's one of the more understated moves in the game that, like, you hardly ever see anybody use or heard, hear about much, but it's, like, also one of the most broken abilities. I'm probably not going to use it much because I want to show gameplay and not break things. And this is interesting because this takes us right back to the beginning. Recover, get get our crap back. That's just a shortcut back here. Pretty sure that's exactly how water flowing works. This area should be cleared though, and we're full on stats. And I need a lot more skill points, because I gotta level Millennia's crap up. Uh, somebody was also asking how you could tell what level Millennia is gonna be. Millennia and Elena share experience. Admittedly, I think it'd be nice if they shared gear a little better, so I didn't have to constantly change everything out. Like, every time Millennia joins the group. Alright, give me a minute, I gotta go change gear and equipment and flip everything around. It'd be kinda nice if I didn't have to do that quite as much, but they do share experience, so she will always be same level, same experience as Elena. Hmm, it's a big ol' empty room.